Hello children, today we will discuss the calculation of standard deviation in case of continuous series. As you have done in the case of individual and discrete series, the calculation of continuous series that is also a simpler cal calculation. The only difference is that in the continuous series you know the class interval is given 0 to 10, 10 to 20 and so on and you have to take out the mid values of the class interval right and then the whole series will be converted in the form of discrete series and then you can do the calculation in the same manner as you learnt in the case of discrete series right. So, let us see with the example now continuous series now this is the direct method as I told you earlier three methods are there direct method, indirect method and step deviation method and we will take each one. Now in the direct method first step is find out mid values of various classes right. So, class interval is given and you have to calculate the mid value and you know how to calculate the mid value L1 minus L2 upon 2 right. So, mid value you have to calculate and then second step is calculate x minus a that is dx a is the assumed mean. Now, in this case a is assumed mean or you will take out sigma f x upon n this is actual mean right. So, when you are taking direct method then you will take out the actual mean arithmetic mean when you are taking indirect method then you take the assumed mean. Now, here third step is multiply frequency of each class with deviations and get sigma f d x. Now, when you take out the deviation x minus here you can write down x minus x bar because this is the direct method and assume mean will not consider in this case and so x minus x bar is equal to dx or sigma f x upon n this is through actual arithmetic mean. Multiply frequency of each class with deviations whatever deviations you have got that is dx multiply these deviations with frequency and do the total to get sigma f d x. What is d x? d x is this x minus x bar multiplied with frequency it becomes f d x. When you do the total of this then you get sigma f d x. Next step find out sigma f d x square. You have to make the square, square of f d x column. Why? Because standard deviation is sigma f d x square upon sigma f. So, when you have calculated sigma f d x make a square of it so that you can put the value here. Next is apply formula standard deviation is equal to sigma f d x square upon sigma f right. So, you have to put the values here sigma f d x square upon sigma f. Now, for example, here class and frequency is given class is 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, 40 to 50. This is the case of continuous series. So, we have taken the class interval here frequency 10, 3, 2, 1, 4. This is the series given to you, this is the data given to you and on the basis of this data you are supposed to calculate standard deviation and coefficient of standard deviation. Now, here let us see the solution. First, you will write down the class as given. Then, next step in front of class, you calculate x. What is this x? This is the mid value. So, 0 to 10, mid value is 5, 10 to 20, mid value is 15, 20 to 30, mid value is 25, 30 to 40, mid value is 35, 40 to 50 mid value is 45. So, after the x column you will make the frequency column frequency will copy down 
in the same order 10, 3, 2, 1, 4. So, respective frequencies with the class interval. Then you have to calculate fx column. Why do we need fx column? Because we have to calculate arithmetic mean. So, fx column this will be f into x right f into x is fx 10 into 5 is 50 3 into 15 is 45 25 into 2 is 50 35 into 1 is 35 45 into 4 is 180. Now, you do the total of these two columns frequency total is sigma f is 20 and fx column sigma fx is add up all these figures and you get 360. Now, first thing you will calculate the mean here x bar is equal to sigma f x upon n you know the formula for arithmetic mean x bar is equal to sigma f x upon n. What is sigma f x? This is 360 write down 360 here n is number of item or total of frequency that is 20. So, x bar is equal to 18. So, this you have calculated as actual mean and after calculating actual mean you have to take out the deviations from actual mean d x is equal to x minus 18 x is this column given to you minus mean 18 is the mean. So, x minus 18 that will be d x these are the deviations here x is 5. So, 5 minus 18 is minus 13, 15 minus 18 is minus 3, 25 minus 18 is 7, 35 minus 18 is 17, 45 minus 18 is 27, right. So, this way you have got dx. Now, your formula says dx square. So, you have to make the square of dx, this will be dx square. How do we make the square of this column? Minus 13 into minus 13, this will become plus 169. To make the square, you will multiply the figure with the same figure. So, minus 13 into minus 13, 169, minus 3 into minus 3 is plus 9, 7 into 7 is 49. 17 into 17 is 289, 27 into 27 is 729. This way you have got d x square, but still your work is not complete because you need f d x square, right. How do we get f d x square? Multiply d x column with frequency, d x square into f will give you f d x square. So, multiply this column with frequency 169 into 10 1690, 9 into 3 is 27, 49 into 2 is 98, 289 into 1 is 289, 729 into 4 is 2916. So, this way you get the value for f d x square right multiply each item with the corresponding frequency. After this you need sigma f d x square. So, you have to add up this to get the total sigma you know that is the total. So, sigma f d x square is add up all these columns and you get the figure 5020 right. Now, one part of this is complete, you have made the columns, you have got the concerned values of the values what you need in the formula that you have calculated over here. Now, next step is apply the formula and as I told you earlier also, first you write down the formula always because without writing down the formula, you cannot put the values and you will lose marks if you do not write the formula. So, first we will write down the formula, this is the sign for standard deviation, standard deviation is equal to sigma f d x square 
upon sigma half whole under root. This is the same formula as I have given you here, right? Sigma f dx square upon sigma f whole under root. You write down the values and take out the under root of it. So, same formula. Now, sigma f dx square, this we have calculated here. This is 5020. So, write down here 5020 upon sigma f, sigma f is 20. Write down 20 here, make the sign of under root. After this, when you simplify it, it is under root of 251. And if you simpli simplify this figure 251, you get this as standard deviation 15.84. Right? Now, after getting the standard deviation, you are going to calculate coefficient of standard deviation, and you know how you have done it earlier also. Coefficient of standard deviation is what? This is equal to standard deviation upon x bar, right? Now, standard deviation is 15.84. So, write down 15.84 here. x bar is 18. So, write down 18 here. Divide it and this is your coefficient of a standard deviation. Clear? So, this is the direct method of calculating standard deviation in case of which type of series? This is the case of continuous series. Okay. Now, next we have indirect method and as you know indirect method always have assume mean. Mean is or you can say deviation is taken out from assume mean not the direct mean and in case figures are big. You know that here the figures were quite big, but not as big as it is difficult to calculate. But if figures are quite big, fx needs long calculation, then in that case normally we take the assume mean. Okay, let us see here the same example I have taken over here. This is the class given as it was given here, same example class take out the mid values, this is x column, mid value of 0 to 10, 5, 10 to 20, 15 and so on. Then frequency you copy down in the same order, 10, 3, 2, 1, 4. Now, you have to assume mean from which column? Will you assume mean from this column? No, you have to assume mean from x column, not even this one because here there are two figures can you cannot assume mean out of this. So, where you will assume mean? You will assume mean from x column and here suppose we take assume mean any value we can take, but here we have taken the central value 25. So, x minus a that is 25, a is the this is a this is assume mean right. So, we assume the mean here. Now, we will take out the deviation to find out dx. How do we find out dx? x minus a or x minus 25. Now, take individual series or take each item here. First, 5 minus 25 is minus 20, 15 minus 25 is minus 10, 25 minus 35 is plus 10.